Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This should be the end of the series on Christ, Kingdom of Heaven. Today is November 21 of the year 2024 AD, Anno Domino, Year of Our Lord. If you see BCE or CE, that is the Antichrist way of denying Christ. And it seems to be a popular thing in academia, but yeah. CE stands for common era in their mind. To me, it stands for Christian era, but hey, I'm only one guy. All right, uh, we covered Revelation chapter 20 in the previous study, but you know what? I'm going to read it again because it's very, very important. I didn't realize that the new heaven and the new earth and new Jerusalem doesn't happen until after the thousand year millennial reign. I mean, I, I mean, it. I don't know. Maybe I knew it, but forgot. Whatever. I don't know. You know, everybody says, "Oh, you know, when when I die, I'm going to go to heaven." Uh, not exactly. Your soul will go to be with Christ. Yes, but you won't get that new body until the first resurrection after the two witnesses are brought back to life after they confront the beast and false prophet so with that in mind let's read revelation chapter 20 21 and 22 and this will be the end of the series or should be and uh so let's take a look in Revelation chapter 20, in your King James Bible, verse 1, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up, and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. So Satan is going to be bound up for a thousand years, minimum. And like I mentioned in the previous study, I think it was part one, that all the children who died young in childbirth or what have you uh, abortions whatever they're going to get a chance to grow up in the kingdom without satan to deceive them in the thousand years and i covered that in the previous study you can go back and take a look if you're don't if you want to go into it i've already covered it so i'm just going to mention it and move on so Satan's going to be chained up uh, until the thousand years happen, and after that he must be loosed a little season. Now, why is he going to be loosed a little season? Because he is going to try to deceive those who grow up in the thousand years and see if the people who died in childbirth, who were given a chance to grow up in the thousand-year millennium, reign of Christ, they're going to be tested and see who they're going to follow. You're going to follow Christ the Lord or are you going to follow Satan? And you'd be surprised how many people are going to follow Satan. And you know, there's actually Satanists that say, well, God can't get rid of Satan. That's why he's still around. Really? you got to realize something. Even Satan serves God's purpose. He does. So, yep, there's people tell you that uh, 
God can't destroy Satan because that's why he's still around. But he, he is serving a purpose for now. So, and then there's people who tell you that all Bibles are wrong. All of them. Well, if, if all Bibles were wrong, there wouldn't be a reason for having 666 different versions of the Bible, would there? I mean, if they were, if, if the Bible was wrong, there'd be no reason to have all these other versions. So, all right, verse 4. John, and I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now on my Odyssey channel, I have a short video of Dr. Oz. Yeah, you know what? You're not going to be on television unless you're one of the devils. Ain't going to happen, people. It's not going to happen. Dr. Oz is one of them. You know, that's what they love to do. They, they'll tell you the truth for a while and to win your confidence. And then when you, when you trust them, they'll slip in the poison. But Dr. Oz, I got a video, and I'm not the only one. There's a lot of people with that video out there. That uh, he's showing the radio frequency ID, the RFID chip. Now, I've mentioned it in the past. When I first came to the Lord in a hotel room in the Orlando area in 1989, December of 1989, I repented and cried my heart out to the Lord. I realized what a fool I'd been. But around 1990, I think it was 1990, yeah, it was 1990. Now I think about it. I bought a King James Bible, started in Genesis 1-1, and read all the way through to Revelation 22. Read the whole thing. I used to spend hours every night, day and night, reading. And um, I just finished reading about the mark of the beast. I don't remember if I finished the entire book of Revelation, but I, you know, it's close. And I asked the Lord, Lord, what is the mark of the beast? And either this was a coincidence or I got an answer. The next morning in the newspaper, I used to get the newspaper. There was a picture of a Jewish veterinarian chipping a dog. Oh yeah, they got this this microchip about the size of a grain of rice. And you could put your owner's name on it and phone number, address, whatever, dog's identification number, uh, health records and what have you. And hey, the dog gets lost, all they got to do is scan the chip, and dog can be returned to you. That happened to somebody I know. Their dog got out and ran around and ran out of the house and wouldn't come back and wanted to go on an adventure, and the pound picked the dog up. It was real friendly. You know, he just wanted to get out there and make new friends, I guess, and they uh, scanned the chip called the people and said, hey, uh, we got your dog. So they went down the pound and picked it up. Now, imagine if you said, hey, we could do that with children. If your child gets kidnapped, hey, we can, we can find your, find the kid's parents. Now, suppose you 
tied in your banking identification with your government identification all in one handy spot. No more identity theft. All your bank records are on this microchip that in the right hand or in the forehead. Hey, great idea, right? Dr. Oz thinks so. Well, Dr. Oz doesn't mention banking and government ID, but suppose they put all the government ID and the bank banking information all on the same chip. No more identity theft. No more people losing their money. You know, sounds like a great idea, don't it? Well, I don't think so. Bible tells you what it is. And, you know, I took computer science and electronics in the 80s. And I was like, whoa, this fits like a glove. It really does. So, all right, so verse 4, Revelation chapter 20. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. Look into the Noahide laws, people. Law number one, worshiping of idols. If you believe Jesus is God come in the flesh, you're worshiping an idol. Punishment, execution. Method, beheading. But that's just a coincidence, right? Yeah. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So the righteous people are going to be in the first resurrection, and the wicked are not going to be resurrected until the thousand years, at the end of that thousand years. Now, what happens if you die before the first resurrection? Do you go to heaven? No, not exactly. Well, not in a body, anyways. In Revelation chapter 6, let's take a look at verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of a fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death. Death. And hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, war, and with hunger, famine, and with death, probably disease, and with the beasts of the field. Uh, Four-legged beasts or two-legged beasts? Hmm, good question, Bob. Do you realize there's going to be a time when one quarter of the earth is going to die? That would be approximately two billion people. And for those of you that don't know what a billion is, well, Congress doesn't know what a billion is either. They spend it like a drunken sailor on payday. But a billion is... 1,000 millions. A million, a thousand times. That's a lot of money. I wish they would just give me one of them. But, no. Nope. Verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar, the altar of God, the souls, the souls, the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, 
Dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? You see, people, when you die, only your soul is going to heaven. And, of course, the Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you, oh, no, 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 when you die, it's just like you go to sleep and you don't know anything until, you know, the Lord brings you back. Well, these people are crying with a loud voice, so obviously they know something. But they don't have their body yet. They are disembodied souls. All right, so let's go back to Revelation chapter 20. All right, so in Revelation 4 and verse chapter 20 and verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast. Neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So until the end of the tribulation, there is no resurrection. All right, so verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death, spiritual death, hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Can you imagine all the children that died in childbirth or abortion or children who died before the age of accountability? It's going to be a lot of them. Verse 9. And they went up on the breath of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. See, all those people that uh, were brought back to life that were raised in the thousand years that followed Satan, they're, this is their doom. They're going to be they're going to be uh, fire from heaven to destroy them. Period. Verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. The book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. So there's a book of life, but there's another book. And if you're not in the book of life, you're in the other book. And that's not good. And if you meet Christ in the great white throne judgment, you are in big doo-doo, big trouble. Uh, let's see. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Huh. And if you think works are not important, I suggest you read James chapter 2. And Jesus even said, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and ye don't do the things that I say? Really? Works are important, but you're not saved by your works. You're saved by the saving grace, mercy, and love, and your faith of, in Jesus Christ. 
but works, good works follow faith, period. Verse 14, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Boom. All right, Revelation chapter 21. Now, after the thousand years, all the saints are resurrected in the first resurrection. After the thousand years, everybody that decided to follow Satan, they're cast into hell and lake of fire. So everybody that's going to be saved is saved. Now, during the thousand year reign of Christ, I'm sure there's going to be people saved there too. Has to be. There's always a remnant. But this is it, people. There's no more no more second chances. Either you make it or you don't. Now, all those people saying, oh yeah, when you die, you go to heaven. Well, you're going under the altar in heaven, but you don't have your body yet. You're just a soul. All right, let's go to Revelation 21. This is what every believer should look forward to. I know I spend a lot of time on how bad things are going to be, but this is what we are going to be looking at in the kingdom. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Do you realize that uh, if the new earth is the same size as this earth, this earth is 90-something percent water I've read. Yeah. The Pacific Ocean is vast. Matter of fact, the Pacific Ocean, from what I understand, is one-third of the entire area of the earth, from what I understand. A third. Like I say, the Pacific Ocean is vast. There was... During the naval Navy times during World War II, they said they would spend weeks in the ocean never seeing land. It's vast, people. So, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. If it's all land, it's going to be pretty big. Verse 2, And I, John, saw the holy city, not this unholy mess that is in Jerusalem today. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Let me tell you something, people. Bob has done a lot of weddings. I used to do a wedding every weekend, probably 50 out of 52 weeks in the year. I'd never seen a bad-looking bride. They may not have been the most beautiful, but they... Uh, I'd never seen a bad-looking bride. Never. New Jerusalem's going to be prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. Well, you're going to have a new body. 
No more, no more headaches, no more back aches, no more arthritis, no more. It's not going to happen. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Unless, of course, you listen to all the modern preachers will tell you, Oh, well, you know, the Bible's mistranslated, so you can't trust it. No. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Well, I believe him. Verse 6. And he said unto me, It is done. It is done. I am Alpha and Omega. Why would Christ say, I am Alpha and Omega? Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. Beta is the second letter of the Greek alphabet. That's where we get the, the word alphabet. Alpha, beta. It's a shortened contraction for A and B in the Greek, in the Greek which we adopted for English. So, alpha is the first letter. What's omega? Omega is the last letter of the Greek alphabet. Christ is basically saying, I'm the beginning and the end. I'm the first and the last. You know, alpha is first, omega is last. I'm the A to Z. I'm everything. I am alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Huh. The fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. We have to over overcome everything in this life, people. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God and he shall be my son. Verse 8. But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Whoa. You don't want to go there, people. Verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone clear as crystal. And had a great wall, oh, I'm sorry, and had a wall great and high, and had 12 gates, not Bill, 12 gates, and at the gates 12 angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Huh. But wait a minute, modern preachers tell us that we're not Israel. Well, that's their opinion. Uh, hey, if, they're, if they say they're not Israel, I believe them. I believe they're the uh, children of the devil, but that's just my opinion. Why 12 gates? 12 tribes of Israel. There is no 13th 
Gentile gate, contrary to the preachers. Verse 13. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations. And in them the name of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. I think it's the eleven plus Paul. Minus Judas Iscariot. But, hey, that's my opinion. So you got twelve gates. And twelve foundations. Verse 15. Right. And, and the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden, a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlong. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. Now, according to Google, a furlong is about an eighth of a mile, 660 feet, or about 200 meters. I don't know. I don't know if that's true, but... So... Let's see, 12,000 furlongs. That's a good distance. Verse 17. And he measured the wall thereof an hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of man, that is, of the angel. Now, from what I understand, a cubit is approximately the distance from the index finger to the elbow, or about 18 inches, or half a yard, or half a meter. 18. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. So this is going to be crystallized gold. Have you ever seen lead crystal? Lead is kind of a grayish black. But lead crystal is somewhat clear. Oh, when I was in Germany, I loved lead crystal. But uh, it's not good to uh, use glasses cups to drink from that are made of lead crystal because you're ingesting lead but it's beautiful or at least i thought it was but i was poor never had the money so yeah whatever verse 19 and the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones the first foundation was jasper the second sapphire the third chalcedony the fourth, an emerald, the fifth, sardonyx, the sixth, sardius, the seventh, chrysolite, the eighth, beryl, the ninth, a topaz, the tenth, a chrysophorus, the eleventh, a jacinth, the twelfth, an amethyst. Uh, these are basically the stones that were represented of the twelve tribes that were on the breastplate that the priest wore when he went into the temple to do sacrifice. Um, but, yeah. Now, if you want to read about the uh, breastplate, which is, uses the same stones as what are mentioned in the New Jerusalem, you could read about this in Exodus chapter 28. Exodus chapter 28. And that will tell you basically the breastplate where they take the stones and they put the names of the children of Israel on them. So, all right, verse Revelation 21 and verse 
21. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl, and the streets of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. It's crystal. Uh, when you got a crystal, all the atoms, from what, from what I understand, all the atoms are aligned perfectly, and it looks like glass, transparent glass. So crystal is has a very set order. It's very orderly, I guess you could say. It's like soldiers in a row, and the light passes through it. Whereas when you take regular gold and everything's all mixed up, it blocks the light so it's not transparent. But this is crystallized. And by the way, sand, like you get on the seashore, that is what they make glass out of. Yeah. They melt it at a very, very, very high temperature. And then they pour it and they let it cool. It becomes a crystal and becomes glass. And you can see through it. But when it's in the sand form, obviously, it's not transparent. So, all right. Uh, da -da -da. The city was pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. Verse 22. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Hmm. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. The Lamb. Who is this Lamb? Well, John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus approaching him at the River Jordan, he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Christ is the Lamb and the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved... What nations? The nations of Israel, the 12 tribes, people. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it, the city, New Jerusalem, and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day. And there shall be no night there. No darkness, people. Zero. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Whoa, people. This is the kingdom. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life. A pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life? Remember in the Garden of Eden, there was the tree of life. And then there was the tree of good and evil. Well, now the tree of life reappears to us that are saved. And I pray that I'm found worthy to be part of all this. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life which bear 12 manner of fruits 12 manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations and there shall be no more curse boy we're uh, america and the, and the western world we're under the curse right now but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, 
and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. You want the name of the Lord in your forehead, or do you want the mark of the beast? Boy, that's a tough one, huh? Verse 5. And there shall be no night there, and no need, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings, the angel, and he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Now remember, in the book of Peter it says, A day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as a day. Is two thousand years a short time? Not when you measure it in our life, no. But if you measure it in God's time, 2,000 years is, you know, two days. That's pretty shortly, you know. If it was uh, December 23rd, you, you're a little kid, and you're like, oh boy, Christmas is in two days. Tomorrow's Christmas Eve. That's short time, right? That's quick, you know. But, of course, you got uh, mockers that'll tell you, well, you know, it's been almost over 2,000 years. That doesn't seem like a short time. Shortly being done. Yeah. Quit listening to those people. Quit listening to those people. Believe the Bible. Verse 6, Revelation 22 and 6. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Verse 7, Christ speaking. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Verse 8. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Do you know what the word revelation means? It means, it's along the meaning of the lines, along the lines of the meaning to reveal. And all the symbolism from for Revelation is drawn from the rest of the Bible, much of it from the Old Testament. So when people don't read three quarters of the Bible called the Old Testament, and they say, well, you know, I read the book of Revelation and I don't understand it. Well, of course not. All the symbolism comes from the Old Testament. If you never read the book of Daniel, the beast system wouldn't make any sense to you. If you never read Isaiah, you'd never wear, understand where, where Christ was quoting from the book of Isaiah, saying he's here to heal the brokenhearted, to release the prisoners from the prison, which is hell. You'd never understand those things. Isaiah, I believe Isaiah is the most quoted Old Testament book in the New Testament. And people won't even bother to read it. Oh boy, hey, look, the game's on. Football, basketball, baseball, soccer. Blah. 
And I used to love watching football. No thank you. I got better things to do with my time. Verse 10. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And there's only one way to cleanse our filthiness, to be righteous and to be holy, and that's with the blood of Christ and our faith in him. That's it. Either you are in Christ or you're not. Verse 12, Christ speaking. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. To give every man according to his work shall be. Our rewards are going to be based upon our works, people. Think about it. I hope I have a crown of righteousness. Verse 13, Jesus speaking. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. What commandments? The two commandments. Love the Lord and love thy neighbor. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. That's what Christ said. Not me. That's not mo those are those are not my words. I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but, you know, the two commandments, love the Lord and love thy neighbor. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. You know, there's only 12 gates for 12 tribes of Israel. If you're not one of them tribes, I don't know how you're going to enter into the gate and in the, into the city. There's not a 13th non-Israel gate, Gentile gate, you could say. It's not there. Verse 15. For without our dogs, two-legged dogs, and saucers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Verse 16. I, Jesus, words of Christ in red here, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. King David of Israel, you know, David and Goliath, and the bright and morning star. Jesus says he is the morning star. Do you know there's a, I think there's a TV show now called Lucifer Morning Star? When you read the NIV Bible, which is published by Zondervan, which is owned by Harper Collins, which is the parent company. Well, I mean, uh, their parent company is uh, the News Corp, which you know as Fox TV. The NIV Bible in Isaiah 14 says that the morning star fell from heaven and is going down to the pit, the pit of hell. They remove the word Lucifer, which is in the King James in Isaiah 14, I mean, my King James Bible says Lucifer fell from heaven and is going down to the pit of hell to be covered with worms. But the NIV removes Lucifer and inserts Morning Star, thus making Jesus the Morning Star who fell from heaven and is going to the hell. That is what they think of Christ. Let me tell you something, people. The NIV was a best-selling Bible. It outsold every other version of the Bible 
at least one year, maybe two or three, I'm not sure. The 1984 edition, you, you couldn't even make, you couldn't even prove that sodomy was a sin. Because the Bible says, in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall everything be established. They actually removed the word sodomy and put temple prostitute. Uh, is it okay to be a prostitute as long as you don't do it at the temple? Or is it okay to do it at the temple as long as you're not a prostitute in charge? And is a, table, a temple prostitute, is that, oh, I'm sorry, not temple, shrine. Shrine. I'm I'm wrong. A shrine prostitute. Um. Now, is a shrine prostitute? Is that a male, or is that a female, or is that a one of the eight genders? I don't know. See, I'm confused. I I I can't keep up with these things. So. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stick with the King James. You know, the King James tells you what to do with witches and sorcerers and those that like to use the wrong hole for uh, pleasure. Yeah, it tells you what to do with them. But we are, uh, we don't do that anymore. Revelation twenty two fifteen. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and adulterers and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie... I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst, Come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. For I testify under every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. So if you want to add something to this Bible, God's going to write pl the plagues, the plagues that are, God's going to add these plagues that are written in the book, the Bible, to you. Verse 19, and if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. You want to remove words from the Bible? God will remove your name from the book of life, people. It, this is serious stuff. I mean, there's not many people that have the fear of God. You know, this is why I would, I will never purposely try to deceive anybody with this stuff because, you know, I'm not doing this for money. If you think I'm doing this for money, you're sadly mistaken. So, believe it or not, I once had somebody tell me that I had a, uh, uh, a mansion on the beach. <laughs> I was like, really? Hey, uh, can you tell me the address so I can go uh, go visit it? You know, I'm like, yeah, please, please give me the address of this my mansion on the beach. I, I would, I would like to have it. You know, but uh, they 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 wouldn't give me my address, so I guess I'll just have to wait. Oh wait, there's not going to be any ocean, so I guess no. No mansion on the beach. Well, there will be a mansion, but it's not going to be on the ocean. So, oh, well, whatever. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And that people is going to be on the kingdom. And I want to close this out with uh, something from John 
The book of John, chapter 14, verse 1. Jesus speaking. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Not small houses, not apartment buildings, not condominiums. Mansions. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And with that in mind, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.